Hey there YouTube, this is Brandon with Shredbox, and in this lesson we're going to talk about sine waves and sound for guitarists. It might get a little bit mathy in here, so please stay with me. All I'm trying to get you to understand is basic conceptual things. Don't worry about the math too much. And the reason we need to know this is because I'm going to start doing electrical sort of lessons soon, and we all need to understand what it is that we're manipulating through tone pots, through chorus effects, anything like that. This is going to be the basis for it. So we're going to start with a circle. Okay, I'm going to draw my coordinates on Y and X. We're going to say the middle is the origin and this thing has a radius of one. Those are called Cartesian coordinates. Now, if we're in like a circular kind of a coordinate system, this is just gonna be zero. This point all the way at the top is gonna be called pi over two. Over here, we've got pi. And then all the way at the bottom, we've got three pi over two. Now, sine is a function of the y coordinate as you travel around this circle. So at zero, it's zero, right? At pi over two, it's one. At pi, it's zero again. And at three pi over two, it is negative one. So picture this like a track and you're a guy just walking around the track, right? As you travel around this circle, sine is your y component. So now you're at one and cosine, which we're not going to talk about after this, is your x component. And those two together give you your position on that circle. I'm gonna get rid of that. And we're gonna draw the sine wave. So the sine wave, if I've got my axes here, this one is gonna be the sine value. This somewhat straight line is going to be time. So we're the dude walking around the circle, right? And we're just mapping what those values are. So at zero, it's zero. Some time goes by and we're at one. Some more time goes by, we're at zero again. A little more time, we're at negative one and then we make it all the way back around the circle and we're at zero. Now, if we did that on a lot more than just those four points, things would smooth out and you would get something like this. This, my friends, is what you hear coming out of your speaker. This is a mathematical representation of sound and sound waves. So, if we continue this out, There's one thing we want to define called wavelength, and that's the peak to the peak of the next uh, bump. Now, it doesn't have to be peak to peak. It can be any point as long as they're the same point on one waveform to the next. Why is that important, you might ask, because the time it takes to travel that wavelength is called frequency. And I know you've heard of frequency. That's the notes you're playing. So let's say it takes you, uh, you're a little dude, right? And you're walking along this line. Let's say it takes you one second to complete this one cycle. You're going at one hertz. Now, if you can do 440 of those cycles in one second, then you're at 440 hertz, also known as A440, or the fifth string in standard tuning. All right, moving on. The distance from this zero point up to the top or down to the bottom is called amplitude, and that's essentially how loud your sound is. So, we've got Amplitude is how loud your, uh, your sound is. And then frequency, based off of this wavelength, 
which gives you pitch or tone. Now, just so we're on the same page, let me draw one more and we'll uh, talk through it. So if you have something like this, what's going on? We've now doubled our frequency, right? So if this note is A440, then since we've doubled our frequency, this note would be 880 hertz. Notice the amplitude too, it's lower. So this note wouldn't be as loud. Got it? If not, go watch it again and make sure you understand everything. Why is this important? Like I said, this is the sound that you're affecting. So if you maybe take this first wave and you shift it just a tiny bit, but keep everything else the same, you've got a chorus effect. All right, you just doubled your sound and it's delayed by a tiny little bit. If you chop the tops off of that, that's called clipping and the bottoms. And then connect the dots. That's distortion. Your ear doesn't hear the whole signal, so it sounds distorted to you. Okay, moving on. Like I've been saying, this is what's coming out of your speaker, and now I want to talk about what's actually going on on your guitar with the strings themselves. So I'm gonna draw these two points, okay? This one, let's call your bridge. And then I'm gonna draw one over here, and that's your nut. So this line, that should be straight, <laughs> is like a string on your guitar. And the length is the scale length. When you pluck that string, it's vibrating in an ellipse. You can do this with a bungee cord or a rubber band, just snap it tight and watch what happens. It moves in an ellipse. So drawing it, it looks something like this. That is what's called a fundamental frequency, okay? Now within that, there's these things called harmonics. So the first harmonic, you would just split this in half and essentially double the signal. Right? We can draw a third. I'll draw a fourth harmonic because it just splits that in half again. Okay, and there are infinite number of these. Take a second, take a deep breath, and think that through, okay? There are infinite numbers of sounds because the harmonic series is a divergent series in calculus. Don't worry about the math behind that, like I said. <laughs> Just know that there are an infinite number of tones. And the reason we use 12 of them instead of infinite is because People in Western music decided that 12 notes sound good together, so those are what we use. If you have like a fretless guitar, you literally have infinite possibilities. Okay, that brings us to another equation that is magic, okay? If you don't believe in math and magic, I think I will have you believing by the end of this. <laughs> This equation is for frequency equals the square root of tension divided by mass, which is the string mass, divided by length, divided by two times the length. Are you convinced that this is awesome yet? No? <laughs> All right, let me dig a little deeper then. So if you know what frequency you're at, 440, okay, we're at an A. You know the string tension based on your scale length and the strings that you use. You can find that from manufacturers. You know the scale length. If you play an open string, you can find the mass of your string. You can find out how much the string that's vibrating weighs. That's pretty cool, but that's not the coolest part about this equation. This equation defines the location of your frets. Because on one string, if instead of playing an open note, 
So let's say on the A string, you want to play a D, you would play the fifth fret, right? Well, how do you know where to make that? You know what frequency that D is. You know the mass of your string. You know the tension. You know what the length of your string needs to be. So you can measure from the bridge to the fifth fret. Well, to where the fifth fret would be. That's how the frets got their locations. Math of magic. <laughs> okay. What else do I need to talk about? I think that's pretty much it. That pretty much covers what we need to know as guitarists. Let me give you a couple of examples of frequency also, I guess, just because we're here, right? So human hearing is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, and that changes with age. As you get older, that top range gets down, and if you're listening to a lot of loud music, really, really loud music, that bottom range might bump up as well. Guitars are generally in the range of about 80 to 5,000 hertz, roughly. So that's good news, right? Because it's well within the range of human hearing, so we can hear everything very well that you can play on a guitar. I hope all of this made sense. If not, please put questions down below. Thank you all for subscribing if you're a subscriber. If not, and you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button and give me those thumbs. Give me up or down. Let me know if I'm doing a good job. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Never stop chasing that tone and I will see you all next time.